Hey everyone, so today I'll be talking about A-B testing in the real world, uh, how it's not UGA clear cut split. So we'll do a quick intro of Drop and myself first, and then we'll dive into the three mini cases. What's Drop? So Drop is a reward platform in which you earn points for your purchases and everyday activities done through the app. You can then later on redeem these points for rewards such as gift cards. Who am I? My name is Yichen. I joined Draw two and a half years ago as the first data analyst. And then since then, I did a bunch of A-B testings. And as you can see from my emojis, uh, the type of emotions I had uh, when the PM presented some of the A-B testing constraints. So today I will share with you guys uh, some of the learnings. Most of you guys are probably very familiar with A-B tests already, uh, but still quickly go over it. A-B test is a method of comparing two versions of a web page or app against each other to determine which one performs better. And a lot of time you can you know, go online, find an online calculator like the one below uh, to calculate your sample size and figure out your experiment duration. Sounds very simple, right? But as you know, life always throws you a bunch of curveballs. So let's see what happened. Scenario number one. Um, in this case, I was asked to design an experiment that measures the incremental revenue rather than the usual conversion rate. Because the, it's not a binomial metric anymore, I could not use the sample calculator I mentioned before. So how do I proceed? I went to Google and Googled a bunch of things and really tried to figure out what's the difference between binomial and non-binomial metric. So binomial metric is any parameter which can only take two discrete values. A lot of our A-B tests, uh, our metric will be a conversion rate, for example, the click-through rate. The user can either click or not click on the cam campaign, so it's binary. A, a non-binomial metric, on the other hand, is any parameter which can take values on continuum. For example, our revenue or our commission. It can be $100, $110, and so on. So in this specific case, I needed to design an experiment that will measure the incremental revenue drop can drive for our partners when they have an offer on an app. So it's a non-binomial metric. So the way I set up the experiment is one, first you have to define your metric. Is it total revenue you're measuring? Is it you know, revenue per user? Or in this case, it was incremental revenue per user. And then you can extract the user level metric for control and net variant. So your control group will be people who does not receive the offer and your very good variant group will be those who does. Then you can calculate the sample standard deviation of each group. Then you calculate the pool standard error of mean. So the formula over here is a pool standard error of mean. And the way you use it is uh, you will be comparing this error bar, so your final result, with what you, uh, the pre-calculated or projected um, incremental revenue per user. If your error bar is greater or equal to your uh, metric, then you don't have significance. And if it's less, you have significance. And over here, you can change, uh, hopefully you can see my mouse, but right now it's times two because I want two sigma error bar. If it's Three, then you just times it by three. Over here, you have the control group size and the treatment group size. So most often when we do A-B tests, you split it by 50-50. However, in this case, because when we want to show the offer to as many drop users as possible, you probably don't want to do a 50-50 split. You can do like 90-10, uh, 80-20, uh, whatever it is. And you can just play around with the split and see what's and compare your error bar with your expected value. The rest of the experiment is very similar to any other standard one, so I won't go through it. So some of the key takeaways are one, don't overcomplicate things. Um, a lot of time the fundamentals are still the same, so we go back to it. Second, we try our best to balance business needs and statistical criteria. Rather than a 50-50 split, you try to maximize the exposure of the offer. However, make sure to leave buffer. Uh, for this one, I definitely learned it the hard way. Like for example, um, if you assume the incremental lift is 
but it end up to like 9.8% and you don't have enough people in your sample size. So when you are setting up the experiment, just make sure you leave some room. Scenario number two, what happens when there's no concrete success metric goal? So without a success metric, we can really back out the sample size and how long we should run the experiment for, which a lot of time our PM will ask. So in this case, how do I proceed? So just to give you guys some context, um, I wanted to run an experiment where for the new user that's going to be onboarding drop, they will not receive a feature called power offer that a lot of them really loved. And we're removing this feature because we want to save on some business costs. And the PM asks, OK, so how will this impact our onboarding rate? The issue over here is that um, before, we never had a version of our app where we don't have this feature. So there's no benchmark and baseline. As a result, we are hard to figure out the goal. So the way I look at this is, yes, I don't really know what the goal it will be. But you know, talking with your EXR team, design team, uh, product team, you likely know what is the lowest threshold of your onboarding rate. So if you can identify, like, you know, for example, 40%, if you don't want your onboarding rate to be lower, uh, lower than 40%, then you have a range now. Uh, in this scenario, because we're removing a user favorite feature, it's likely your onboarding rate will stay the same, but more likely decrease. So your onboarding rate will be something in the middle, and then your range will be your current onboarding rate to your uh, minimum threshold. In some other scenarios, maybe the company wants to fund certain features in order to increase engagement. And in that case, and you can figure out with your finance or operation team, what, uh, what is the threshold where your business cost is greater than your user engagement? And then you have a range there. And once you have a range, you can just do a quick sensitivity analysis to figure the rest out. So uh, over here, this is a simplified sensitivity analysis. So based on the changes in your onboarding rate, you can figure out your sample size required really easily uh, using an online calculator. Based on your historical data, you likely would know what is your um, average daily user acquisition. And then from that, you can figure out your experiment duration. Something to note is that um, you should probably talk with your marketing team, especially if you, you, you are in a startup, because depending on what their budget looks like or their marketing strategy, you will need to tweak this projected uh, average user uh, per day accordingly. Something else to call out is that think about the type of post analysis you want to do. So for example, if you want to look at onboarding rate per acquisition source, you want to set up your experiments uh, beforehand based on those acquisition source. So the key takeaway here is in a scenario where we cannot define success, then at least define what failures look like because then we know what the end result and we can work backwards to figure everything else out. The last case study is one I think that often occurs, especially at a more startup or business-sized company, um, is when the business and the product needs are in conflict. I'm pretty sure at least like some of you have experiences where the data team is like, oh yeah, we should run this experiment for six weeks. And the business team is like, nah, nah, you only have three weeks, that's it. So in this case, to do or not to do, that is the question. To answer that, uh, oh, actually, <laughs> sorry, before that, let me give you a little bit more context. Um, in this case, we started to build our feature over here. Because the business team wants to expose this, um, launch this feature to everyone on Drop, uh, before we enter in the holidays season to maximize exposure. So our launch date is over here in the middle. But based on pre-analysis, we know that it's unlikely we'll have statistical significance until later on. So in this case, how do we decide, like, do we even bother setting up the A-B test or not? And to answer that question, um, is, we can answer these two questions first. 
Number one, what information will you not have if you don't run this experiment? And then by the end of the holiday campaign, can you know for sure that we should you know, keep this feature and keep on iterating on it? Or is it a complete flop, which in, case, in this case, we should just take it out. So the way I approach it is, what information will I not have if I don't run an experiment? Well, I wouldn't really know the ROI of this feature. Having an experiment with control and treatment, even though it's only like say three weeks, at least I can project the relative lift in our revenue and compare it to the cost. Then even though if it's not like perfectly accurate, I'll know if it's at least like negative or positive. And second is that if the user does really love this feature or if they hate it, you'll see a huge fluctuation in your engagement metrics. As a result, you will likely still have statistical significance. And then by answering these two questions, at the end of the holiday season, you know, you know if the ROI is horrible or the user absolutely hate it, stop, you know, stop crowding your app. But if the above isn't true, then you have now have more time and to talk with your project team to figure out the next step. Something I want to call out over here is that um, because we're in an e-commerce space and in the holiday seasons, there are tons of seasonality. So we can't really rely on pre and post analysis to figure out the direction and answer these questions. That's why I opt for a A-B testing this scenario. So the key takeaways are sometimes a minimal change isn't a bad thing. At least you know, you know your ROI isn't super negative or your engagement didn't drop a lot. And more importantly, we don't need a perfect experiment to derive valuable insight. I think in the tech realm, especially uh, at startup where things go so fast and you have limited resources, we need to try to figure out how do we design the experiment and what question we should really ask to, to get those insight. Because a lot of times knowing directionally the impact of the decision is much better than knowing nothing at all. These days, especially in tech, if you made a decision, if you launch certain features, you can easily reverse it. As long as you know you're directionally going at the right place, eventually you'll get there. So this is my presentation for today. Um, hopefully you don't run into this conflict at work, but if you do, this hopefully this helps a little bit. Thank for case number one, your formula for standard error seemed to assume that the test and control groups have equal variance. How realistic is the assumption for your data? Why not just use the formula for unequal variances, which is applicable for both situations? Mm -hmm. That's a really, really good call out. Um, the, so for job, we, when a user is on board, uh, they can connect their, you know, banking information with us. So we do have a lot of transaction data. And the way we are pitching to our clients is we will target the user segment based on their predetermined uh, spending behavior. So as a result for, at least for dropping our case, uh, we can make sure it is equal variance. If a long time after development for the engineering team, the AB test results are not significant for the new feature, how does your team or the leader determine the next step? That's a really, really good question for sure. Um, so for us, is that when an A-B test, we do have a preset timeline for experiments. If by the end of the time we don't see significance, well, we do have a UXR team as well. Then we'll partner up with them to figure out, you know, what might be the reason that our, our hypothesis is wrong. Um, there's actually a case where someone from my team was doing this experiment that, uh, like in the end, we didn't see significance and our variant was actually like performing worse. And by partnering up with UXR, we figured out, oh, it's because like the actual ex execution of that feature wasn't ideal. That's why the metric was actually lower comparing to control. So in this case, make sure you have those conversations with your users to figure out why exactly that your ex uh, like your experiment is not working in any scenario, and then you can figure out the next step.